Well, it's good, and welcome everybody online, too. Thank you for being here as a part of our service this morning. God is just moving and doing wonderful things, and I'm not exactly sure. That wasn't, most of that wasn't in, on the agenda today. It was just the Holy Spirit really just was pressing in. For many of you, it was necessary. How many of you know this was good for you to this morning? Yeah, amen. And we're just we're and we're just through the first forty minutes, so uh, we're doing pretty good here at this particular point in time. But I thank you for all for being here today and for joining us online. Many of you who are online and you are got COVID or the flu or whatever it is that that you're yeah, yeah I know struggling with. I get it. Uh, been there, done that, and it still stinks um, through everything. But nonetheless. We pray for you and praying for you and continue to pray for you that God will give you health and will take care of you in everything that God is doing in hearts and lives. We're going to have faith kids this morning in a few minutes. I will dismiss them to head on back for their part of the worship service youth group tonight at 5 o'clock. Don't forget that. And then uh, for everybody who came and helped us to put away all of the uh, holiday, de Christmas and stuff and decorations and lights and all the rest of that. Wow, thank you so much for doing a great job. But Austin couldn't sleep and he was here, what, five in the morning? And he got here at five in the morning, so it's, somebody needs to buy that board lunch today and uh, say thank you for doing that. Wednesday is going to be uh, uh, my class, Upper Zoom class, and uh, at that particular point in time, we're going to be uh, working on, on the next part of the Lord's Prayer. And we're going to be going into prayer this weekend. Um, I want everyone to be a part of it, if at all possible. Uh, but uh, uh, but you know, a lot of people say, well, I just don't know how to pray. Well, Jesus taught us how to pray. And that's what we were diving into this past Wednesday. We recorded that. I'm hoping at some point in the next few weeks to get that uploaded, uh, to uh, edited and uploaded for you to be able to have. But if you need to know, well, I want you to know now. So if you can come, please, 630, uh, be online or via Zoom jumpstart, which starts next Sunday. I need about five more people to uh, join with us. That's going to be online and on campus, uh, but I need some more people in order to be able to, for that class to work. You just have to have so many to make it work. It's like pistons on an engine. You need them all to get the thing to go. So um, so if you are looking to jumpstart your relationship with Christ or you're new in your relationship with Jesus and you just want to get things going, this is a great opportunity to be able to do this. Jumpstart is something I created years ago. It's updated now for uh, of the day that we live in in time now. So that's going to be 830, starting 830 next Sunday. Sunday. So if you will sign up at the back or you can text me at jumpstart uh, 341-5940 and I will make sure that you are on the list. January 15th is next Sunday. Big deal. It's a big day. You say, Pastor, have you learned anything from last week about this coming Sunday? Little bit. Uh, it's the will of God. That's what I've named the series, but it's not about knowing the will of God <laughs> so much as it is what I'm going to be sharing with you is the will of God. Uh, I don't know if that made any sense whatsoever, but, uh, but God says, I'm going to really do something here on January 15th. That's great. What is it? I'll let you know later. <laughs> yes, Lord. Don't argue with him. You just, you just run with it. But I, uh, yeah, there's some things he shared with me this week, and I'm like, wow, okay, that's going to be pretty cool. Men's breakfast is the 20th. Randy sure is going to be sharing in that one. So, guys, make sure you're here. Breakfast, we're going to have all, the, all of that ready to go. And Randy's going to be blessing us there in the day. For our guests online, thank you for being here. If you've never registered with us before, please, please do so. A button will show up there in the chat, and you can click on that and just let us know your name and email, and, and that's it. And we will send you a nice email back saying thank you for being here. But it helps us to be able to know who is here and what is going on and be a part of our family, whether it's online or here in-house. And for our guests here, Thank you so much for being here today. Should have received a card that allows you to fill out just your name and email and phone number, and we don't share that information with anybody. It's just a part of what we do to be able to include people to be a part of our family. And how many of you are glad you're a part of this family? Say amen. 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 Also, if uh, you want to, and I need to do this real quickly. I forgot to do this earlier. Let me see if I can open up my Facebook. 
here real quickly and invite everybody to come. There it is. I got my post ready. And invite everybody online. Just put in that uh, link that's there online or the one here behind my head here for those of you. Invite somebody to come to church with you right now. They may be home in their pajamas, and that's fine. We don't care. Uh, but we have an opportunity to invite somebody to be a part of this service here today. It's a great opportunity for people to come and join and learn who we are in everything that we say and do. Well, I got through all of that pretty quickly. I'll go ahead and dismiss the kids this time to head on back to Kids Church. God bless you so much. There's a reason why I'm moving along pretty quickly, so I'll share with that for you here in just a few moments so you know why is he in a, heart, why is he in a rush up there. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you why. So uh, for those who you give, you can go online at ffwc.us or you can you go via Cash App and the screen will show up for those of you online where you can Cash App or you can go online and you can give or those of you here in house, there's a giving kiosk there in the back and you can avail yourself to the giving envelopes and everything there. Uh, and thank you for your faithfulness in giving. Last week I kicked off a 10-week series on, uh, uh, on, on the principles of having that will lead you to have a heart before God. I can put a whole sentence together. God bless me. They, uh, I can do it. They, they, uh, they, but I, I want you to know today that, uh, that whenever we align our heart with God's heart, things change. Amen. Now, uh, God, God is always has been and always will be, and, and he is eternal and he's never changing. But when we, when we change, when we allow him to change us, it changes our whole perspective on life and the peace that is in our heart. And that's important to us. Now, last week I spoke about ownership. God owns everything, including us. That's what it says in Psalms 24.1. God owns everything. And this week I want to speak to his order. God has an order to everything. God it is not... It, God is not chaotic. God is not disorganized. Has anybody ever noticed that? Just read the first three chapters of Genesis. Man, he goes through there. Everything is in order. He did everything. Everything he does, he does with a purpose in our lives. Now, in Ezekiel 13, 2, God is speaking here. He says, dedicate to me every firstborn among the Israelites, firstborn offspring to be born, both human and animal belongs to me. And here we see a principle that God begins to lead people to put him first in their lives, in everything. In everything. Not just giving, but in everything. Another example is Cain and Abel. Why would God bless Abel but reject Cain's offering? Well, in Genesis 4, 3 through 5, it says, When it was time for the harvest, Cain presented some of his crops as a gift to the Lord. Abel also brought a gift, the best portions of the firstborn lambs from his flock. The Lord accepted Abel and his gift, but did not accept Cain and his gift. And it, and, and it says, over the course of time, God, Cain brought something to God. You know, it was, kind of, oh yeah, I need to go do this. You, you can see this in this passage of scripture, the way that it, the story is told. That Cain was just kind of, well, you know, yeah, I'll give God something over this. But Abel was doing it with purpose. He says, no, God is first. I'm going to put first God first in my life. I'm going to bring him the first. He was a shepherd. I'm going to bring the first of my flocks. So, you know, Cain is like, well, you know, when I get around to it, I'll give God some carrots. He was a farmer. Um, or some watermelon or something like that. And that's what it was. But that isn't putting God first, is it? Whenever we give that way. Now, Elijah and the widow found in 1 Kings 17, God brings Elijah to a widow and challenges her to put God first in her life. They have just enough food for her and her son to have one last meal, and then they are going to starve to death. That's what the scripture says. And Elijah says, if you will make me something and then make you a little something after that, you're not going to die. You're, you're not going to lose your son. You're not going to lose your life. And she does. She puts God first, and God provides for her and son, and, and they don't die. They have plenty of food for the rest of the drought. Miraculously, the, the cruise of oil never runs out, and the, and the uh, thing of flour never runs empty the whole time. I'm sure every morning they get up and they open that thing up. Where'd that come from, you know? But God provides. That's what he does. Now, Jericho was the first city. Israel conquered whenever they came into the promised land. And he said, that city, of everything that's in that city, that belongs to me. You can have all the rest of it, but the first city belongs to me. All the gold, all the silver, the bronze, everything, it all belongs to me. Now, one man in the whole nation, he keeps a little something for himself, and it brings a curse upon the nation. 
as a result of his disobedience to, be, to, to do that. And all through Scripture, we see this again and again and again. Consecrated or cursed. Consecrated or set apart for God or cursed. Not set apart for God. Now, when we're consecrated, dedicated to him, that means he, he can bless us. How many of you like being blessed? Amen? You say, well, what is it, what, what, you know, then what is cursed? Not blessed. That's what that means. That's what curse means. You are not blessed. You're on your own. And, and we are living in a world today that's on its own. And we are witnessing before us in our culture the results of not putting God first in our homes, in our lives, in every area that is around us. We live in a fallen, cursed, sinful world. And if we do nothing, we are doomed to live in unnecessary pain. Hello. We're doomed to live in that. But whenever we put God first, he can bless everything. So whenever Malachi chapter 3 verse 8 speaks about people robbing God, what are we robbing God of? Well, his money. No, I already said this, Psalms 24, 1. God already owns everything. He already owns all the money. And we're not, we're not giving, we're not withholding that from him. We're withholding, we're robbing him of the opportunity to bless us. Whoops. That's what it means. So when we tithe, when we give, when we put God first in our giving, in our life, in our time, and everything else, we allow him the opportunity to come in and do things in our life that would never happen unless we put him first. So ownership is number one, and order is number two. Father, I thank you for what you've done for your many blessings, and I pray that you pour out your spirit upon your people in this place. I pray believing that you will be glorified through their giving, as they put you first. Lord, it's a struggle. I admit that. It's a struggle for me. It's a struggle for many people. But we also have reaped the joy that comes from the blessing in your life, and we seek that more than anything else. Lord, we yield to you and your word. In Jesus' name we pray, and everyone said. After the service this morning, after we go off the air, we're going to hear from a missionary today, but it from a very sensitive country. And so that missionary cannot appear on any video, recording, or anything like that. That's why we're going to do it after we go off the air. And that's why I'm kind of hurrying along, along a little bit here as I go through this, because what they do, where they are at, is very important. Now, that's all I can say. Uh, that's all I can say on the air. That's it. I'm done uh, at that particular point in time, because they're sitting there looking at me going, don't you dare say another thing uh, to be able to do that. But um, we're, we're going we're, we're gonna to have that here this morning. So for those of you here in service, don't get in a rush because sh they'll take about 10 minutes to share with you. But I, I guarantee it will be worth it. It'll be a good 10 minutes that will be a blessing to your life. And, and for those of you online, um, I, I don't know. I, we'll figure it out. All right. Um, if you want to know something, we'll figure it out. But anyhow, Philippians 4, 6 through 8. If you have the Uversion app, please, if you haven't got it downloaded and got your account set up and found your friendship with Faith Family Worship Center in Palm City, make sure you do so because my notes are in there and you can go into more and events and you can find us there on a list and it's available right now until 1130 and then it'll go off the air and uh, that will be the end of that. That's the way they do it. So if you want to keep a copy, though, you can go in and do that. This week, an NFL player's heart attack during Monday night football. Anybody see that? I saw that when it happened. A movie star was nearly killed while cleaning his driveway of snow. A famous rally driver dies in a small assault snowmobile accident. A pope's funeral. The House of Representatives ends up in deadlock. A volcano erupts again. Uh, how many of you heard any of this? Yeah, we've all heard something, right? Well, where's the good news? Where's the good news at? Local hero breaks into school and saves 24 people during a New York blizzard. Did you hear that one? Yes, some of you? Okay, good. Landscape company gives employees $28 million in appreciation from bonuses for a job well done. How many want to go work for them? Right? Strangers join together to rent a 15-passenger van after flight was canceled to take a 10-hour road, road trip instead. Yeah, there was, I think it was Spirit Airline canceled them, and they're like, by the time they figure out how to do this, we could already be there. And they just go down, rent themselves a 15-passenger van, load up, and go and to drive on, and nobody knew anybody. It was just, 
You know, we can find good news if we're looking for it. We can find good news if we are looking for it, but the world you and I live in today has trained us just to focus on the bad news. And that's something that you need to change about your future, about your 2023. What are you going to listen to? What are you going to focus on? 2023 isn't 2022 or 21 or 20. It's not. That's an assumption. And that's, that's a bad assumption to boot. You don't want to get involved with that. But if you want this year to be different, you got to do something different. I'm just saying, it, it, it's, I know that's real deep theology, but, it, but if you want the year to be different, do something different. Amen. If you keep doing this, no, we ain't going to go down that road. Anyhow, last week I kicked off the first Sunday of the year with Philippians 4, 6, and 7. Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he has done. Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and your minds as you live in Christ Jesus. Now, my heart desires to restart your prayer engine, your prayer engine. Every one of you, you've got an engine in there and prayer, and it, and it can change your future. It can change your world. And it allows you to discover faith that brings you to new levels of hope and joy that you've never experienced before. And I love the quote that I read this week from a great missionary by the name of Hudson Taylor, who said, when we work, we work. When we pray, God works. Also, Mark Madison says, I work like everything depends on me, and I pray like everything depends upon God. And so when we discover that what we do does matter, but prayer must be a part of everything that we do. It changes our future. Now, it would be best if you didn't miss next Sunday. Uh, the, the, I've already talked a little bit about the will of God. When we pray, God reveals. When we pray, God reveals. I don't know how many times over the course of the last few, um, um, I didn't get that much coffee. Don't look at me that way. Over the course of the last, I can't, I'm going to slow down. I'm going to slow down. Over the course of the last few weeks, people have been saying to me, you know, Pastor, I just, I just don't know. I, you know, what does God want me to do? Where does he want me to go? Have you prayed about it? Well, well, mm -hmm. if you don't pray, God will not reveal. You, cannot ha you can't listen to somebody if you're not a part of the conversation. And how many of you know listening is a lost art on our culture today? But we as followers of Jesus need to be great listeners. If we don't pray, we're on our own. How many of you think that's been fun? No? Okay. So what is the purpose of your life? If you cannot find yourself, you're just bouncing from idea to idea, from thought to thought, from place to place, and da da da, and, and all the rest, all the rest. And I've seen people do this from marriage to marriage, from career to career, from university to university, from job to job. I mean, people just they just cannot find themselves. You mean you may need to ask God, where are you? Not him, you, Lord. I don't even know where I'm at anymore. You, if you're not comfortable in your relationship with him and, and the relationships around you, if you're not even comfortable in your own skin, hmm, you may need to ask God who you are. If you cannot listen and learn from other people who love you, I know, that one was tough. Hello. If you cannot listen and learn from the people who love you, you may need to ask God who you are. But how? Pray. God, who am I? What is my purpose? Why am I breathing perfectly good air? Why am I here? These are very valid questions to ask if you don't know the answer to them. That's where you need to begin. God, what have you, who have you called me to be? Anyone who assumes that prayer is easy or just a convenient way of being a follower of Jesus without doing any work does not understand prayer. People who say, well, I pray. I'm a prayer warrior. Man, I'm telling you what, thank God for prayer warriors. But if you think that, that that's easy, <laughs> no. That's one of the hardest callings of anyone to receive in the church. Prayer is an act of worship, honoring God with the opportunity to be glorified through our needs. 
When we pray, we're inviting him to come in through, the, through this moment that we are in right now, which is never perfect. How many of you ever noticed that? Every time you go to pray, something's messed up. But you take that and say, God, how could you be glorified through this? What can we do here? What do you want to do in me? How do you want to change me? How do you, how, what? What is it, Lord? And when we begin to pray like that, God's like, yes. Uh, their, their, their thing, the world can change when we allow him to be able to do that. Prayer is an act of faith. The shift in our hearts from a world's point of view to a biblical one is huge. You say, I'm looking at, my, at the world, I'm looking at everything around me, and it's all a mess. It's always been a mess, you just noticed. Things changed. But whenever you begin to pray, you begin to see this world through God's eyes. And that changes everything. And all of a sudden, all this out here, it ain't that important. It just isn't that important. He is. Amen. As we begin to pray, heaven, come down to earth. We got a mess down here and we need your help. Amen. Things have gone sideways and we need a revival. We need a revival of salvation. We need a revival of your word yes. in our hearts and lives. We as a church are called to pray. And it helps you to see yourself through the eyes of Christ. A lot of you are, are, are just terrified to find out who you really are. You're terrified of discovering who, who's really there in the mirror. And when you see yourself through the eyes of Christ... Not only do you see who you really are, but you can also see who he, in he intended for you to be. And you see that person and you go, oh, yes. You may not like who you are right now. I get that. How many of you? You understand. Man, there's just some days you don't like you. Jesus still loves you. <laughs> Praise God. But when you see what he is doing in your life to lead you to a place to be someone that you have yet to discover, prayer guides you to find your true identity because you identify who Christ is in you. You cannot know who you are as a husband, as a wife, as a parent, or any of those things until Christ is here. And we learn who that person is through our prayer life. We can go to, you know, yeah, you can go to classes about it. You can go to read books about it. There's plenty of stuff out there that you can discover all this and that one thing. And that. But what does God say about you? Only he can answer that question. And we have to ask it. Just a quick review from last week. Paul said to pray and not worry. Do not let worry be the center of your faith. Okay. If your prayer life draws strength from worry, you're constantly exhausted and frustrated. Worry just leads you just to more, more worry. Worry just, just is, is wor it just reproduces. It just keeps going and going and going and going and going. Let your life, prayer life draw strength from your faith in Christ. Okay? Let your prayer life draw faith in Christ. What do you say about this, Lord? Now, in verse 6, he says, tell God what you need and thank him for all he's done. Now, I didn't have time to get into all of this last week, and I'm just going to highlight it, but let me say it real quickly. Gratefulness and generosity aligns your heart with God. Gratefulness and generosity aligns your heart with God. It does not surprise me that you and I live in a world today that wants to be greedy and stingy. That wants to take and not give. It, come on. You live in a world today that is doing the exact opposite of everything that God wants us to do. Amen. That is by design. It is not an accident. Hell wants us to withhold our grace from one another. So our gratefulness, an ungrateful heart is never content, or in other words, you can never rest. You can never rest. 
You're constantly going, 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 going. There's no rest. There's no break. I can never catch a break. I never can get it. I'm always tired. <laughs> gratefulness and generosity aligns your heart with God and brings that to a stop. If you develop thankfulness and gratefulness, it will help you overcome feelings of doom, deficiency, and discouragement in a positive and a healthy way. When you become generous and you do it, and you do it in a way to be able to bless other people, yeah. not recklessly, but just to be responsible with what God has given unto you, then the feelings, how many got feelings? I didn't say felons, so I'm not need feel. Feelings, I'm trying to say those without a southern accent. When you got feelings, feelings will lead you astray. Feelings will tell you your, your marriage is going to fall apart. You are worthless. You are no good. You can't do anything right. Nobody loves you. All the rest of these things, they're lying. How many ever notice that your emotions like to lie to you? Hello? How many ever just wrote and you, you did something stupid because of love? Yeah, we've all done it. God loves us. Perfect love never fails. When we trust him, we are his church. Jesus pours his authority into his church. He pours his authority into his church. Why did Jesus teach us our Father in heaven, not my Father in heaven? Because he wanted us to understand we pray together. It's not about my God. It's about our God. We're not to be selfish with him. It isn't about me. It's about us. And he is the one who has blessed his church Hell would love to create a you versus me mentality to discourage you from discovering or experiencing his joy in the church. Why is there always so much division in the church? Because hell's trying to keep the joy out of the church. I don't like going there. I don't like doing this. The problem isn't us. We're always screwed up. If you, want, if you want a list of things to complain about, we'll give you one. We know what our faults and failures are for the most part. But we allow those to be covered under the blood of Christ, and we love one another, as Paul taught us to in 1 Corinthians, that love covers a multitude of sins. Because we're all valuable in the sight of Christ. And if, if you are valuable in the sight of Christ, you're valuable in my sight too. And we should practice that with each other. Culture has painted the church as a horrible, abusive place, but I'm here to tell you the victory you are looking for in your life, your marriage, your family, your future is found in Christ yeah. through his church. Through his church. There's a reason why the church exists. We see a birth in Acts chapter number 2, and we read about it all the way through the rest of the New Testament. It's all about the church. And oftentimes we read those scriptures, it's all about me, and we miss the blessing that is in it because God is going to do something greater through us than he can do through me or you. That's why hope groups are so important. That's why ministries are so important because together we grow. Now, Paul says in, in verse 7, you will experience God's peace which exceeds everything that we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. Peace is a confidence that transcends all understanding. Peace isn't, I got every, but it, 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 it is not. Peace is not, I got everything the way I want it, now I'm happy. That's not, that's not peace. Two things wrong with that. Two, you are in control, which means everybody else is miserable. Uh, I bless you. You didn't like that. The, uh, uh, there's, and you're, manip you're, you're manipulating. Either you manipulated all the relations around you to get it the way that you wanted, or you manipulated your mind to create a fantasy to see things in a different way so you'll be happy. That's not peace. That's not peace. Peace is a confidence that transcends all understanding. It speaks to your trust in your Creator. Peace transcends all fears. I'm at peace. I talked to Paul this week after he received his diagnosis. First thing he says, I'm at peace with this. It's fine. Now I know where we're going. Now I know what to pray about. Now I know what we're doing. Now I'm at peace. I'm at peace with this. 
And you say, I don't know if I could do that. Well, I don't want you to have to find out. But I do know that all of us face times in our life whenever we have to believe in the peace that God gives us in spite of the circumstances that are going on around us. Peace transcends all fears, fear of death, loneliness, worthlessness, and divorce. You understand these things all too well, don't you? Amen? You understand that you're just one step away from a disaster. And it seems like every easy thing, well, now, now more than ever. No, we've always just been one step away from a disaster. But it takes a faith to understand that God is doing something more remarkable in your life than what is just sitting right there within arm's reach that can destroy everything around you. It is supernatural, and it takes an act of supernatural faith to experience it, to experience peace. It's, it's a supernatural thing. It's not something you just conjure up, not something you just go out and you buy at Walmart, okay? It's, that's not what this is. Do you know what an act of supernatural faith is called? Prayer. Prayer is an act of faith. In the NFL player, um, whose name just completely escaped me, the uh, um, Damar Hamill, that's it. And, and they're there. Everybody goes out there on the field and prays. You know, and somebody texted me, who, who uh, I, no, I wasn't even expecting this from them, and they're like, all of a sudden the NFL dis- decides it's okay to pray on the field now. Yeah, it's okay to pray on the field. And then an ESPN commentator gets on there and he's saying, everybody's praying, everybody's praying. We're all talking about praying. Let's pray. And right there on the camera, Lord, pray. And I watched a, a podcast with, uh, or a video cast of, the, of this young man just a couple of weeks ago. And he says, you know, Today, I don't, I, I, every day is precious. I never know when I'm going to get another day. He's 20-something years old. He said, I just came out of prayer with, with, with the defensive backs. Uh, and we just had, had prayer together. And, he, and he's talking about God in his life and everything else. But he's emphasizing over and over, you've got to live every day of your life. You can't just sit back and wonder what's going to happen. That is a supernatural act of faith that we're witnessing there before us. And to the doubters and scoffers who say that divine healing or miracles are not for today, I have to ask, why do you participate in this supernatural act of faith so that you might experience the miracle of peace? Is it so hard to believe that God can give us peace and he can also raise the dead? There is no difference in the faith of Scripture between those two things. It's just as easy for him to save you from your sins as it is to heal someone from cancer. What we see in the, in the word of God said, we're the ones who say, well, this is really hard and that's really easy. And God, God in heaven is going, none of it's hard. Why do you limit your faith by putting these things upon yourself? God never put them on you. He is the one who gives you the right to have peace and hope and joy and love because they are miracles that he gives to us from his heart and he willingly and richly imparts them to us if we ask. Never assume. This miracle isn't about you just feeling better. If anything, it's about how you react to life whenever life isn't fair. Here's something I can tell you about 2023. Something's going to happen you're not going to like. As if it hasn't happened already, the week is young. Just give it a minute. There was Wednesday night. There was a car wreck right out here in front. Nobody was injured. And uh, three-car accident. I get right out there. The guy, I guess he was the one responsible for it. I don't know. But he's out there. His car is up across the street up in the bushes. And he's mad. He is just livid. And he looks at me and he goes, I just bought it. Ouch. I just bought the car. I mean, like 15 minutes ago, I just bought the car. I just looked at him and I said, it can all be fixed. Just remember that. And he's he's like, yeah, that's... (laughs) 
But how many of you have been there? You just look at it and you go, I don't want to fix it. <laughs> I don't want to be in wreck. <laughs> I don't want this diagnosis. I don't want this to happen to me. I don't want to lose my job. I don't want to lose my faith. We've all, we all understand this. Peace isn't about you feeling better. It's what sees you through those times when life isn't fair. Amen. And Paul says that peace will guard your heart and your minds as you live in Christ Jesus. The most important thing for you to guard is not your finances or your career or your marriage or your family, your kids or your opinion. Now follow with me. Don't get angry at me at this particular point. Just, just hear the rest of it. These things are naturally taken care of. Yeah. When we give our life to him and his peace guards our hearts and our minds. That means the decisions we make in the spirit and those that we make of ourselves are under his authority. Consecrated to him so he can bless them. Now, Running from one thing to another. Go ahead and bring that door up if you would. We live life and we're always trying to, you know, trying to figure stuff out. I know, I'm doing it all the time. I read. I, did, I read books. I, I, I read all books all the time. And, and learn and all the rest of stuff. And a lot of us out here, we're running from one thing to another, thinking that one day one of these things is going to work. I'm going to do this. That didn't work. I'm going to go over here. I'm going to do this. Well, that didn't work. I'm going to go over here. I'm going to do that. Well, that didn't work. And we just keep going bounce, 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 bounce. And I've seen, and I, 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 I've said this once already, I've seen people go from spouse to spouse to spouse to spouse to spouse thinking they're going to find one that's going to work. No, marriage will never make you happy. <laughs> going from thing to thing from, from whatever is never going to be able to make you happy because whenever anxiety and worry comes and starts knocking on your door you're going to go bankrupt you're going to lose your kids let me in. You need to be worrying about this. You need to know what's going on out here. You need to get out here and you need to fix this. You need to do something right now. Because if you don't do something right now, everything's going to fall apart. And your life is going to become a hot mess. And don't look at me like I have lost my mind. You're living this every day. Somebody is beating on your door, threatening to take you out. And you're thinking, I should open that door. And beat up whoever's trying to get a hold of me. And I'm telling you, that would be the dumbest thing you've ever done. Because the peace. Come on. This door is made of peace. Yeah. I'm going to let that soak in just a second because you're all looking at me going, wait, 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 wait a minute. Don't open the door. Because the peace will guard your heart and your mind. And even though all of this is going on outside, if you don't have this peace, you won't have a door and you're in trouble. I'm telling you right now, things are going to get real, real uh, uh, painful for you very, very quickly. Don't be afraid of the noise. Don't, you're, you're working it. I'll try, let me say it one more time for those of you, maybe you're still trying to figure this out. Don't be afraid of the noise. It's just noise. The world 
is, is, is rattling and moaning and yelling and screaming and all the social media and the media and all the rest and all we're going through. We got another COVID strain. I can't even figure out what the name of that one is. And, and uh, oh, well, we got the flu. We got this. Oh, everything's going to go up. Well. We can't find drugs. There's going to be a short. There's a shortage of Tylenol. Don't ask me why. There, well, we, we got, we're, gonna, we're not going to be able to find this and that. I, 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 I can't. Uh, let's stop listening to the noise and let this peace guard your hearts. You say, how do I get a door? If you haven't heard me already for the last one and a half Sundays, let me tell you. Pray for it. Lord, I need a door in the front. I, I need a front door. I need a good one too. Done. When you put him first in your life, somebody say amen. amen. Somebody say thank you for Greg for putting up with this. All right, there you go. God bless you. You can take the door now. You may not take it home and do not let Eric. <laughs> Eric's moving into a new place and he needs a door and he came up looking at it earlier thinking, ooh, I need a door. You do not get my door, son. I'm, we'll break. You need a door. You tell me how much a door is. We'll buy you a door, but you're not getting my door. You just leave my door alone. Okay. Uh, it says here that peace will guard your heart. Okay, let me tell you about your guard real quickly. In the Greek, it means to guard like a castle or a military encampment. It's a military term. So think about peace will guard you like you got the moat around the castle and you got the towers and you've got the watchmen on the towers and you've got the catapults. You've got everything that you need to guard it with everything to the teeth. That's what peace does. It guards your life to the ultimate of life's challenges that try to come against you. Now, Paul qualifies this miracle with a relationship with Jesus. Because he says there, his peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live, as you live in Christ Jesus. Without a relationship, there is no peace. It's not an acquaintance type of relationship. It is not a casual type of relationship. Oh, I know God. God knows me. Yeah, God and I, we got a deal. When was God striking deals? I, don't, I read the Bible. I know the deal. It's a good deal. You should buy into it. That's the deal you should get because that's the only one. A deep relationship of value and love that will never compromise or destroy you. Too much of that going on these days. Relationships that destroy. Carelessness. I can I, pick a profession. I can, I can tell you stories. Lawyers who don't care. Doctors who don't care, pastors who don't care. I can, I, all day long. And the wake of broken lives behind them because of their carelessness. A relationship with Christ does not destroy you. He encourages you. He builds you up. He changes your 2023 because he said, you know how this was going to turn out? Yeah, well, we're not going to do that. I've got something better in mind when we pay, place him first. We express our worship, which is the daily acceptance of God's love and living in it. The daily acceptance of God's love and living in it. God loves you. God loves you. I'm, 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 apparently sound is getting it's slower in the back of the room. God loves you. God loves you. God, I'm not an actor, so I really can't put a whole lot on this. You know, God loves you. I mean, God loves you. Remember me talking about how you need to have your vision and knowledge of who God is transformed like it was transformed for Peter, James, and John in Mark chapter number 9? This is where you need to get this right here. God loves you. I mean, he loves you. And as much as you understand it, and I'm included here, 
I still don't get it. He still, he loves you so much. Accept it. You, you need to accept that. God loves you. Well, if God loved me, I wouldn't have gone through this. You got this all backwards. See, you're not, you, don't have a, you don't have a door on the front of your heart to keep that worry and anxiety out. You didn't put him first in your life. You didn't pray about it. I've been praying about it. You've been praying about, Lord, fix it, fix it, fix it, or Lord, fix me. Change me. Then you can see with faith. Verse 8. And now, dear brothers and sisters, one final thing. This is what it says. Oh, we did put a screen up. Great. Fix your thoughts on what is true and honorable and right and pure and lovely and admirable. Think about things that are excellent and worthy of praise. Get this. Do you get this? How many of you get this? How many of you think you get this? Let me see. Okay, I got two hands. P two, two. Okay. When you have peace, then you can think right. Yes, amen. Come on, bro. We quote this verse, and we are in turmoil. No, you cannot do this, and your mind looks like something you put in your blender. If you want clarity of your future, for your kids' future, for your marriage and everything else. I'll let, pray for the peace that God that passes all understanding. Then, in that relationship, it changes everything. You cannot focus your heart and mind on th- God's things if you're anxious and worried. All those things are designed to direct you away from God. Yep. Have you ever noticed if you say these things, I just don't have time to serve. I just, I just don't have the time to read my Bible. I just don't have the time to pray. I just don't have, you know, all of us, you're too busy. You're just too busy. You need to come back and say, you know what? I need to prioritize. I need to discipline my life to put him first. And then I can see what he wants me to see. You cannot see your lost friends and loved ones lifting their hands in worship if you're all worried about whether or not you're going to make your next vacation or if you're going to go and be able to buy that car. I, I, for a moment this week, I thought, you know, I got about 150000 on my car. Maybe I should go. Nope, but we're going to get another twenty, thirty thousand 30000 out of that car. Um, well, that scared me. You cannot see yourself making a difference through the gifts of the Spirit to bring healing and hope to your community and faith in life if you're, if you're all wrapped up in your anxious, worry thoughts. You cannot see individuals being anything more than they are right now. Now, let me speak to this real quickly because the church of Jesus Christ needs to wise up on this one real fast. We live in a world of people who are broken. They are messed up. And they have discovered new levels of messed up that I did not think were possible. And they still need Jesus. You need to see those people for who they can be in Christ, not for what they are in the moment. You need to start seeing people for who they can be in Jesus Christ, and that's the way you treat them. That's the way you treat them. What they're doing right now, they're, they're sinning. That's because they're sinners. Yes, amen. What do sinners do? Sin. Why are you so surprised? And why do you get offended about it? That's your problem. That's not God's problem. He died on a cross. He's already got a solution, but he would like for you to go and tell them about the love of Jesus. He would like for you to go and show them love, acceptance, and forgiveness. He would like for you to accept them even though they smell like trash, they act like trash, they look like trash. It does not matter because in the eyes of God, he sees somebody that he loves just as much as he loves you. Years ago, I preached a series of messages entitled Faith Plus Action Equals a Blessing. Now, in that series, I said that if you have faith but you take no action, there would be no blessing. 
Today I see that people are doing a lot of action but with no faith. About 10, 12 years ago, now we flipped it. But the results are the same. No blessing. Our works don't save us or add value to our lives. Our works add value to the lives of others. It's not about what I get out of it. It's about what you get out of it. I don't want to preach. You no, know, if, if I go outside and say, Pastor, great sermon. God bless you. Thank you so much for the compliment and everything else. What did you get out of it? Amen. What is it in here? Because I want you to leave this place going, you know what? I need to pray. Yeah. On, for those of you online, I need to pray. I need to figure out how to, I need to do this, pray, I need to do this praying thing. And if you can't spell prayer, don't worry about it. It's not necessary. It's not on the test. Just start talking to God. Here I am. I'm a hot mess and I don't know what to do next. Could you give me a little bit of help? I guarantee you pray that kind of prayer. Heaven will open up. And the grace of God will flow out of the river, uh, like a river out of the throne straight down into your life. And it will propose changes to you that will make you go, what in the world is going on? Accept what God is doing. I don't understand it. Really? Is that going to be the big qualifier there? When you get to heaven and you see everything that's going on up there and you think, I'm going to understand everything. No. you're. How about trusting him? Why don't we just do that instead and leave all the thinking to him? Let him be in control, in other words. Let him direct our lives and our futures. It's all about others. A church with a selfless attitude will have become a haven of hope for everyone. But the follower of Jesus who cannot trust God or his church will be alone in a room full of people enjoying peace. And I'd just explain to you, for those of you who have been in church for any amount of time, any length of time, why some people are just miserable in a perfectly good church. That's why. They're angry at God. They're angry at themselves. They're angry at others. And they wonder, why am I angry at everybody all the time? Because you're angry with yourself. Your relationship with Jesus isn't changing you, and that frustrates you. On this Saturday, January 14th, I'm calling for us as a church to pray and fast, and I'm asking one person to pray per hour. Here's a sign-up sheet there in the back, but then there'll be a slide that'll show up here in a minute. So for those of you online says, hey, I'd like to take one of those hours, we'll just text prayer to me at that number that's going to show up, I'm pretty sure, in a moment. But anyhow... um, and later this week, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to email everybody. Everybody, if you're on the email list, you're going to get an email from me about prayer and fasting and all the rest of that stuff. I'm working on that now to be able to send to you. But, uh, but if you want to pray, you want to be on that prayer. Now, by the way, for those of you like, oh, probably 3 to 4 a.m. is already taken. No, it isn't. Actually, midnight all the way through 6 a.m. is already filled. That was, those were the first slots that, that filled up. I've never seen that in all my days as a pastor. Ever. I mean, everybody, I figure everybody run back there to get like, you know, eight or nine o'clock in the morning. Nope. So I got some great slots left for people to be able to pray. Also this week, I'm be emailing and texting the prayer chain, confirming that you want to continue this year. But if you want to join, it's a texting chain. It's not a phone call. If you got to receive texts. And if you want to do that, text chain to that same number, C-H-A-I-N. And if you want to be a part of the part of the prayer chain, then 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 let let me know. And for those of you already on it, you don't have to do it. You're going to get an email, uh, a text from me this week saying, "Hey, you want to continue to do this? Then respond. If not, then okay, that's okay." And I'm working on rebooting our private prayer page on Facebook. And if you want to be a part of this, let us know, and we send you an invitation. It's it's something we send to you uh, to be a part of that. And make sure that you you do that 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 you want to do those things. So this week's hope group again is about the Lord's Prayer, learning how to pray. That's on campus and online. And um, if you didn't get your invitation last Wednesday, let me know. We'll go back in the software and fix it again. We're looking for new software. We're really trying to fix that problem, but it's not being easy. Uh, It's not an easy task for us to be able to do that and um, to continue this. But 
if you are in a place, I said all that, but if you're in a place where you say, I'm a mess, you just, I'm a mess, okay? You need to pray. Here's your answer. What do I do? Pray. I'm lost. I'm lost in life. I'm lost in purpose. I'm lost in myself. I thought I knew who I was, but I don't know so much anymore. Pray. I'm hopeless. I don't know what to do. You need to pray. I'm angry. I'm angry at the world. I'm angry at the people around me. I'm angry at God. I'm angry at you, Pastor. I'm angry at whatever. Pray. Pray. Whenever we begin to understand that the answer is prayer, you say, where does that go? It it goes to the throne room of heaven, the one place in the universe that can change your life and do so with perfection and with grace and humility and love and mercy. That's it. I understand now chasing solutions isn't the answer. Pursuing God is. Chasing solutions isn't the answer. Pursuing God for who he is is our goal. And that will restore trust in our heart with our creator and one another. It will restore faith. It will restore hope. It will restore joy. It will restore love. When we see that happen. Stand with me if you would across this auditorium and those of you there online. You can hang in here with me. I'm going to pray. And I want you, people are texting me, prayer, all the rest of this stuff. This is cool. It's a real simple altar call. You don't even have to bow your head, close your eyes. All it is, is this. How many of you here need to pray? I need to pray. I need to pray. I don't want, it's not about what you want. I need it. I need, I need Jesus. Right now in my life, I need him more than ever. Lord, I pray for every hand raised. I pray for every person here who is seeking your presence. I pray that you will increase their faith to a place that changes their lives. It may not improve any situations. It may not solve any problems right now. But they come to that place where peace begins to protect their heart and their mind. And while the world desperately wails and moans and screams and yells at them to distract them, Lord, I I ask you to do a work in their life that they will focus their purpose, their life, their hope, their future on you and not be distracted by the things of this world and the people of it. Lord, we need you now more than ever in everything that we say and do. I pray, I pray, Lord, that we will be known as the church of prayer. If anything, what we're known for in this community, people will say that church prays. They will pray for you. I pray for a gentleman who I've never met who sent word to me through a friend. Suddenly, a young man, colon cancer, stage four, suddenly gets this no hope, two young children. He sent, he's Catholic God, but he sent word asking us to pray saying, I know you know how to talk to God. God, I pray, move 
in his heart, in his body, in his mind, his life. Move, God. We pray for that man. Lord Jesus, you do a work right now for him to your glory and honor. You get the testimony and the credit. And Lord, may we pray every day, every week, of every month, of every year. Lord, I pray we will be the church that will pray. In Jesus' name we pray. And everyone said, and amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. God bless. Somebody give the glory to God in this place. Amen.